It's hard to escape talk of AI these days, and if you didn't know better, you'd think it was invented sometime in 2022 when ChatGPT burst onto the scene. But AI has been around for a while, with several pivotal moments that have shaped our history. Today we're going to talk about a documentary made about one such moment, IBM's iconic marketing decision to introduce its AI, Watson, on Jeopardy in 2011. The film delves into how this moment in the zeitgeist transformed the world's cultural understanding of innovation, enabling IBM to take the lead in early conversations surrounding AI. Welcome to One Amazing Thing About Transmission. Today we're talking with Ricky Abbott, president at Transmission, about their documentary, Who is Watson? The Day AI Went Prime Time. Ricky, welcome to the show. Thank you, Greg. Lovely to be on. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this. Uh, in, a, in a few minutes, we'll, we'll actually watch the trailer for the, for the documentary. And, and of course, we'll, we'll put a link to the full film in the, in the show notes. But before we dive into that, uh, why don't we start with you giving a little background on you and your role at Transmission? Sure. So I'm the president for Transmission. Um, uh, I'm based here in San Francisco. Don't uh, get confused by the accent, but I am British. So born and raised in London, uh, which is where our agency started. And then I moved over here in 2019 to start our North American operation. Um, previously running, uh, previously having roles in marketing strategy and biz development across a number of publisher roles and agency side. Great, great. So yeah, before we take a look at the trailer, why don't we start with you talking a little bit about, you know, wh why did you choose to make the documentary? Uh, certainly, you know, fa fascinating topic, but, um, you know, even though the, the story is, is from a, a little bit ago, 2011, why is this uh, story still relevant today? Yeah, so maybe to, to talk a bit about why we made the documentary in the first place is quite an interesting, I was trying to explain this to someone this morning, so it's quite an interesting story, I think, in itself. Mm -hmm. So if you go back a bit, when you think about campaigns, actually, let's go back a, a year ago, before AI, let's go back, mm -hmm. maybe a year, maybe two, or according to this, 10. Right. When people, when marketers, when CMOs are trying to create campaigns, they have a fixed amount of budget that they can work to, that they can use to create campaigns. And what that means is they've got to do brand, they've got to, in B2B anyway, they've got to do brand, they've got to do demand, they've got to do sales, they've got to do feel, they've got to do AR, they've got to do PR. There's just a lot of bases they need to cover with that budget, which means they're stretched. What that typically meant is then when you put a campaign out or your message out into the market, you had to be, actually, even before that, you had to be emotional, but you also had to have your product in there. Um, because the audience's attention is bifurcated. It's, it's, you know, it's really split up. There's so many different messages you get hit with every single day. And that's really, really, really challenging. Obviously now with AI, it means that you can be more efficient with your budget. So for example, the messy middle, what we call demand generation, you don't need to spend millions and millions of dollars creating eBooks and white papers and infographics. Actually, what you can do now is use AI to create that content and automate as much of that middle part of the journey as you, as you can, because ultimately you're not always going to have a customer, a human being reading that content. Guess what's going to read that content in LLM. They're going to get their answers directly from that. So the battlegrounds where you need to fight and really win is in the brand side and on the sales side. Now, if we go to the brand side, like I said before, in the old world, you would try to create a campaign that had both your emotional pulling at the heartstrings and also product. But yeah. you know, as consumers, we're not idiots. If we get sent a message that has product and emotion in it, you know it's an ad and you immediately switch off. As audiences get younger, their preferences are moving more towards things like YouTube and Amazon and Netflix and Roku. And so we've been looking, so to give you a very succinct answer now, after I rambled on for a few minutes, we've been trying to look at ways to cut through the noise and clients will often say to us, we want our viral campaign. And it's not, they're not asking for viral, what they're looking for is actually cut through. So a couple of years ago, we had this concept called shockwaves and ripples. We were like, oh, this is the way to cut through big, big activations. Like imagine someone going at one of our clients at Fashion Week and doing something and really cutting through the noise. But the problem is it's really hard to plan for that. It's really hard to explain to someone how to do that. And it's even hard to explain to my, my team how to do that. So about a year ago, about two years ago, actually, I went to a conference called Elevate at Sundance. And it was a brand storytelling event. 
and I was watching all these amazing brand storytelling films right, from North Face, Patagonia, Red Bull. I was like, this is what we need. But how does this look for B2B? So we tried to convince our clients to do it. And a couple of our clients did actually say, yeah, we'll do this. But because they're B2B, because they're product and engineering led, the immediate pull was to have product in there. And, it, mm. and the end product didn't turn out to be very good. So we decided that we would, instead of telling people that they should spend their money to do it, we said we spend our own money and do it. So we created this documentary and we were looking really for a place where marketing is showing up for the good in B2B rather than the negative. Like if you've seen the Pepsi Harrier jet, where's my jet on Netflix, right. that shows the opposite side, that shows the negative side. We want to show the positive side, specifically in B2B. And so we, we decided to create our own film. We went story hunting. We found some stories. This IBM story landed on our lap. Really good story from our director, Celia Ankosovich. Um, and that's why we decided to go there. And I think it's really relevant still today because it actually shows brand storytelling in its earliest guise. Like IBM wanted to sell a message. They went on to Jeopardy, which is effectively culturally relevant, to deliver a message to show how AI can compete against I won't give away too much against two champions. Um, and so I think it shows that. And I guess the other side of it, depending on who you are, is it shows early form of AI. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What was the most surprising thing that you learned while making the film? So obviously I run a advertising agency and what I can say from, at least from North America, globally actually from us, is advertising has been operationalized to the nth degree what i mean by that is you know you do strategy you do creative you do content you do activation and every step is so operationalized there's no like forgive the pun here jeopardy there's no jeopardy there's no like oh i don't know what's coming next yeah what was really interesting about this world was when i first went to elevate i was like how do you create this and every single director and producer would say it depends okay and in my world i can't work to it depends That's right right nebulous i need like a focus if you will and yeah. so i think the biggest thing i learned during this process is taking risks and developing trust with your director like we had a lot of trust with celia but even that trust was strained because you take huge leaps of faith and if what you get shown isn't exactly what you want it's like you you in advertising world you're like oh my god i've got to throw it all out and start again but in the hollywood world there's nothing like that. They can turn something that's not very good into something that's amazing very quickly because you have so much material to work with. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Well, uh, let's uh, take a look at the trailer for the film. When you're going to try to reposition the industry, somebody has to create that vision. And I said, I need a game. IBM was coming at her from a marketing perspective. There is risk required in marketing. Other career scientists at IBM would actually pass me in the hall and start laughing at me. <laughs> there was a chance we were going to lose. It was just this uproar. Something about the world has changed forever. This is sort of like our Super Bowl. This was IBM's brand. Work hard, innovate, and lead. I jumped up out of my chair and said, this is it, we're going. This is history, no matter what happens. Well, thanks so much for sharing this, Ricky. Um, and one right. last question before we uh, wrap up here, uh, for those that are interested in learning more about the documentary, as well as uh, taking a look at it, uh, as well as learning uh, more about transmission, uh, how should they do that? Uh, so we have a website with the film, so you can go watch the film, you can go watch it on YouTube. Um, I'd actually just reach out to us, because I will say the, the hardest thing with brand storytelling, and we experienced this when we did our private screeners, everyone would come up to you, how do I do the next thing? And how do I do the next thing? And, and for marketers that have always been doing campaigns, going to B2B, sorry, going to brand storytelling is a huge leap of faith, a huge leap of faith. And so I think the best way is honestly, just reach out to us, have a conversation, um, otherwise, if not, go to Sundance. It's very expensive, but it's a great event to go to, and you'll learn all about brand storytelling there. Love it, love it. Well, again, I'd like to thank Ricky Abbott, president at Transmission, for joining the show. You can learn more about Ricky, Transmission, and take a look at the film by following the links in the show notes. Hey.